Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to another Stay Fishy Adventure. I'm so glad that you guys are along for another ride on this amazing Wednesday afternoon. Today is going to be a fun one. I'm heading to the store to get some ingredients. We're going to go find some rocks and then we're headed to the beach for an earth oven 2.0. We're going to be rebuilding this earth oven. I'm going to do a really cool recipe for you guys in it. One of my favorite camping recipes just in time for summer. It's a beautiful spring day. Thank you for being here, everybody. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe to this channel, and be sure to stick around for an amazing adventure. So I want to challenge all you ladies and gentlemen out there while you're watching the beginning of this video while I'm picking out all the ingredients here at the grocery store. I want you guys to be commenting below on what you think I'm going to be cooking here. This is one of my favorite camping meals and it's so easy and you're going to see why it's so easy and fun. And it's honestly, it's one of my favorite dishes in the world. So here we go. Let's start picking this stuff out and see some comments below on what you think we're cooking here. Okay, well after walking about a mile and a half in the grocery store, I got my exercise and I built up an appetite. Now we gotta go find some rocks to build this earth oven and for our weights for fishing. And you guys might be throwing a big question mark up as to what the hell that means, but we're gonna need some, some rocks and some boulders to get our gear down for the way we're gonna fish today. So let's get checked out, let's get on the river. number one. Uh, load number two. And load number three. Oh. oh my goodness, we made it. After an incredible amount of running around and Jordan's forgotten items of the day, we are sitting on the beach. We still have some setup to do. We're gonna get the rods out first. So I'm gonna show you guys, we're fishing today for the most highly prized fish, maybe in the Pacific Northwest, maybe in the world. I would say it's right there on the top tier of some of the highest quality fish in the world, uh, and that being salmon especially. They're called Spring Chinook. And out here in the Pacific Northwest, it is a, a riveted item that people love to catch. And it's something that people go nuts for. It's some of the highest fat content out of any salmon in the world. And they come into the Columbia River and they travel clear to Idaho at times. They go hundreds and hundreds of miles up river. So that being said, when they come in fresh down in these lower rivers, they are incredibly high in fat content and incredibly tasty. So that's what we're fishing for today with a very, very unique setup. So I'm gonna pull all my rods out, get stuff ready and show you exactly how we're gonna be doing this, which is very interesting. We're gonna be using rocks to take our stuff out and the SS Bendo. So let's get the truck unloaded, let's get everything set up and let's get to fishing and then let's get to cooking. everybody. What are you doing down there, Little? Little's going nuts! Ah, ha, ha. Get a okay, time to get our rods set up, everyone. Well, this is a very elaborate setup. One of the probably more elaborate of, of any sort of fishing setup for salmon. And the thing is that we're running three different setups on our line, which is kind of cool. It kind of makes it interesting. Um, and it's really neat to how many different like sections of water that you can cover and just the variety of lures that you can use. A lot of times we'll use the same, all three of the same thing. So I'm, I'm gonna get this setup going. I'll show you exactly what we're doing. We're gonna get it run out so that we can start getting our earth oven built. So this method is what they call plunking. And I don't, I can't really call it a slang term, but it's just what it's always been called. Uh, some call it bar fishing, some call it, some call it lazy man old timer fishing, but we call it plunking. It's not necessarily my favorite style of fishing, um, other than if you have a nice campfire and some beer and some friends around, and then it's actually a pretty good time because you're staying active. But a lot of times you set the rods and the rod holders, you run your lines out with the old SS Bendo here, uh, and then we're gonna drop them down to the bottom and let them soak and let those fish come to the lures, uh, which is pretty neat. So at times, especially in a big river like this, when these fish are constantly migrating, you can have super successful days. And honestly, today we're looking for one. If I got one spring shirt today, I would be so tickled pink. It's my favorite meal of the year. And uh, uh, fingers crossed, cross your fingers with me, everybody. Wish me luck. So let's get this setup going. Okay, so the way this setup starts is very interesting. Once again, we're gonna use a three-way swivel. 
that's what this is right here obviously you can tell by the way it is it's three ways so and that's how our first setup is going to go on there so i'm going to tie just a normal knot get that thing connected and you know while i'm setting this up everybody i want to ask all the viewers out there a question of what do you guys think is the coolest part of these episodes so far i've been trying to make it a little less about fishing but i want to know from you guys the viewer what you think your favorite parts of these videos are is it the fishing is it the cooking is it the the bushcraft the camping or or just the adventure and the friends that we make along the way and me and the camera guys and you know other people like marlon that help me with this channel are really just rattling our brains all the time about what we should do more of and and what you guys like the most so be sure to comment below throughout the video what your favorite parts are and just interact so that we know what you guys want to see so first swivel's on and i'm going to run a little length a 40 pound test only about i don't know two feet or so okay there we have it we got our three three-way swivels now we're going to add our leaders and our hooks and our spin glows off to each one of these Okay, so for my top one, I'm going with my smile blade. Second, I'm gonna go with old greeny. Three, old strawberry. There we have it. There's our setup. Okay, everybody. Now, so for the other reason we got rocks other than our earth oven, it's for our weight system that we're gonna use here. I'm gonna just wrap this thing around here a bunch of times. And this is just a lot lighter line than, than what is on ex the reel um, so that when a fish does grab it and we go to set the hook on the fish, the fish will just break the thing off and be able to swim freely and not have any weight fighting against it. And that way you can get a little bit easier fight and hold that hook into it because out here you have to use barbless hooks. And so that's what we're going to do next is trim our barbs and then we're ready to fish. And last but not least, our bait. That's what these are. These are little shrimp that live in the ocean and we call these coon shrimp. It says Bendo, departing. Hi, little. So we're at 70 feet, 70 feet or so out from the bank. These fish don't run very far. I'm gonna reach back, grab my stuff, make sure it's all spinning, send it to the bottom. Perfect. We're fishing. We're fishing, everyone. We're fishing. Okay, rod number one's out. We're fishing. One more step. One last step. We're gonna hang our bell on. So that way, while we're up there building the earth oven and we're busy, and that thing starts to go off, that rod gets hit, we'll be able to hear that thing jingling. So I'm gonna reel that nice and tight so that that rock breaks when we do get hooked up. Check my drag. Looking good. We're good to go, everybody. Let's get our other rod set up and let's get to building an earth oven. It's time for Earth Oven 2.0. First, drink a beer. Here it goes. Now, if you guys didn't see Earth Oven 1.0, it was actually the very, very first Stay Fishy video. So go on back down in the logs of the videos. I think there's six or seven of them now. And check those out. The first one was really cool. It was an awesome day of steelhead fishing. So I hope maybe the Earth Oven is good luck and we're still gonna catch a fish today. But we got both rods in, the lines are soaking. 
we're fishing and it's time to dig this ground out and make us an earth oven. So an earth oven is something that I found on YouTube. And it's kind of a primitive method of, of cooking. And what it's nice for is a situation just like this where we are just gonna be chilling all day. We're gonna be hanging out on the beach and letting our stuff cook. And we don't have to mess with it. You don't have to tune or mess with any kind of propane or any heat. We're gonna be building this oven and then letting it cook throughout the day. And by the time it's nighttime and it's time to eat some dinner, they'll all be ready to eat while we'll have to do this dish up. So let's get started here. What I'm gonna do first is just kind of etch out the shape of this thing. I'm gonna dig this hole kind of down at an angle here. Go from shallow to deep. That looks good. That looks really good. We're gonna first start with our big rocks. Kind of make myself a little perimeter here. Hopefully I got enough. This is kind of a tough method to, to build. Obviously I'm trying to make like a dome structure out of, out of rocks, which is not exactly the easiest thing to do. So it's gonna be strategic. Basically I wanna to try to block out most and all of the air. I'm gonna use my barbecue grate to put on top of this, which will help me a lot in uh, creating that structure like that. But most of these big rocks are gonna go on bottom first. And then I'm gonna use the smaller ones to kind of fill in the gaps like you see here. I'm gonna to try to use the same trick that I used last time here. Oh, that was dangerous. That was very dangerous. I think I'm gonna improvise here, everybody. A little improv. Just a little crutch. Hopefully this really punky wet wood won't burn when I get my fire going. Give myself a little support here. Maybe I'll do it on this other side as well. They're looking good. I do, do like it. Here we go. There we have it, everybody, Earth Oven 2.0. So now we get the fire started and we preheat the oven to a 375. All right, everybody, here it goes. So we're making chicken and dumplings and we're making campfire chicken and dumplings, which is hands down one of my favorite camping meals. It's really nice because you can see how compact and ready to go all the ingredients are. We're taking all pre-cooked stuff. So we got grilled chicken, we got mixed vegetables, we got two cream of chicken soups, and then we have two cream of mushroom soups. So it makes it super easy. We just dump it all in, mix it all up, season it up a little bit, and then we're gonna cover it and put it in the earth oven and just let it cook. It, some, you could let it cook for however long you want. The longer you let it cook, the more flavor everything kind of gains. It's that little bit of a smoky flavor from the smoke. And of course, then it's just done whenever we want it to. We'll add the dumplings, which is just my Pillsbury Grands. Basically, 20 minutes or so before we're ready to eat so that they're nice and fluffy and soft. So, let's get this going. First things first, all the veggies. Next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add in my soups. So there's the cream of chicken, you can see by the way it is. There's one, two, three. And the nice part about using that cream of mushroom, you could just go all cream of chicken and add more mushrooms and other ingredients, but it keeps it super simple. It's got that mushroom flavor, it's got those actual little bits and pieces of the mushrooms, and then we have that creaminess of the chicken soup. So saves one more thing for packing in the coolers. Now what we're gonna do, so that none of this burns, is we're just gonna mix this all up here. Get that nice and mixed together. One last ingredient, some beer. So 
So our last ingredient is going to be the lux that we found in our last video. And this is like a wild radish, basically. And if you guys didn't see that last video, go back in after you're done watching this one and watch it. It was pretty freaking cool. I found some pretty radical stuff out in the desert. And I didn't find the second piece to the recipe to that I was trying to make with this lux, which was pilhi, which is a root, but it like kind of resembles a noodle. So I'm going to go back out and try that again. So go check that episode out after you're done watching this one and see how I got these and see what else I found on my last adventure. But we're gonna use this, and it's kinda like a wild, like I said, a wild radish. So I'm gonna peel that skin off of it. And the nice part about the looks is it has a really, really nice flavor, kind of a fresh and crispy. So it'll go well with, with, the, uh, with the corn and everything else. It kinda almost has like a corn flavor in a way. Get this outer shell off here. Okay, that should be plenty. This is a really, really neat ingredient, and you'll see as I start to slice this up, the texture of it. It's got that really kind of rooty, almost like a radish type of look to it, radish texture. And it does add a lot of flavor, that's why I'm not going to use too many. It's really good by itself, it's super refreshing, especially straight out of the ground if you're ever out in the desert and uh, kind of want a little snack while you're on the go. Okay, throw those right in there. And this will go really nicely. It'll have that same kind of the texture as the chicken well. So I'm excited to try this. Guys, there's a sea lion cruising the bank right behind me. He's like 10 feet off the bank. He's gonna get in our lines. Oh, he's going after a fish. I'm pretty sure he's chasing a fish right now, everybody. Let's watch. Look, you can see him, you can see him jetting out. He's going back, now he's back in, he's chasing him. Wow, look at that, he's, look at that wake he's making. All the way up the bank, you can almost see him. I'm gonna send a little lap. Oh, he's chasing him. Oh, it's a huge one. You tell him, little. You tell him. Get that stupid sea lion out of here. Wow, look at him, everybody. You can still see the wake that that thing's creating. Going straight up. I think we might be running our lines a little too far because if that thing's chasing fish that close to the bank, then obviously that's where those fish are running. Well, that was exciting. A little dinner and a show. Holy moly. Okay, the look is in. Now time for our chicken. Almost looks just like the chicken. The looks does. Ha, <laughs> get it? It almost looks like the chicken. <laughs> Mix all that in. Oh man, that's looking really good. I wish you guys could smell that too. It's just phenomenal. I'm gonna go with quite a bit of cracked pepper. Some of my favorite garlic seasoning. Go pretty heavy on that. We got a lot of ingredients in there. Just a smidge of Montreal for that little bit of a fennel. A little bit of the ghost cream hot sauce. Not much, gotta preserve this stuff. That's gonna add that really nice, really nice truffle flavor, a little bit of spice. Mmm, that's good. Mix her up one more time. Maybe one more splash of beer. Okay. Okay, she's ready for the oven. Just gonna fold over my aluminum foil like that. I'm gonna grab that side, push it down. And this side, push down, give it a little twist. I think the oven's preheated. Let's get to cooking. Until those rocks are nice and hot in there. Want to make sure that we're pretty much, pretty much the fire's put out. We don't want to have a lot of extra heat. I'm gonna slide that bad boy in there, just like that. Oh boy. And then I think what I'm gonna do here, just to kind of trap that heat in a little bit more. There it is, the earth oven, 2.0. I think it's time for a bait check. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna reel down, lift up, broke my rock off, got my rocks off there, get some of that seaweed off, and let's see how our stuff's looking. Oh man, we were all seaweeded, super seaweeded. Man, I could have added that to our recipe out there. These aren't vegetarian fish, everyone. The heck? Seaweed for days. It's okay though, at least we were fishing, nothing was tangled, our setup's held. I'm gonna clean all this stuff off, get rebated.
Well, never mind. Squall moved in. Pretty sure I would have got blown out into the ocean from here on the old SS Bendo. So we're gonna wait for this big squall to pass. Go check our food and get another line back out. Well, the storm is not quite yet passed, but I'm starting to worry about our chicken and dumplings. I'm gonna go check it out. Wish me luck. Okay, I still have quite a bit of a bit of heat in there. Grab this bad boy. Oh, ooh, oh, oh, that was close. That was almost disaster. Oh my God, that smells so freaking good. What I don't want to happen is this thing to stick too bad to the bottom. Oh, we're looking good so far. Smells amazing. Looks amazing, let's see if it's hot. Holy crap. Mm. Okay, time for the rolls. Woohoo, that was fun. It's my favorite part of these things. We'll start laying these things in there. And hopefully by the time this squall passes, we'll be able to serve it up. There we go. Make sure to get that nice and sealed. Lock all that heat inside. Back in the oven we go. Lock that heat back in there. The last of that heat in there. And then we're gonna let this thing cook for quite a while. Ah, we had a log the whole time. I bet that sea lion put it there. Well, second rod, nothing but weeds. Once again, we had like a weed hot dog on there though. I wonder if we could have eaten that thing. If this was a survival show, we totally would have. But we'll retire rock, our shrimps are still good. Let's rerun this thing. Sun feels nice. Can you believe it was hailing 20 minutes ago? And now I'm in a t-shirt again. But I think our dumplings are ready. We've left it in there for another hour and a half. I think what we're gonna do after we take our dumplings out of the oven is go meet up with a friend of mine, jump in his boat and try to really catch a springer here today. Cause it would be so cool for this video if we actually got one and could cook it in the next episode. So let's grab this. Oh, what a fashionable earth oven. Let's see some comments down below, everybody. What do you think of earth oven 2.0? I'm pretty happy with it. Our, our grate didn't quite survive this one quite as well. Our fire got a little hotter than last time. And maybe these rocks are a little bit heavier than those ones I used on the river last time. So uncover this thing. All right, let's go unveil it. <laughs> Look at it, golden brown in the sunlight. Yummy, everyone. Heck yeah, okay, I'm dishing up. There's no time to waste here. There's fish to be caught, there's dumplings to be eaten. Holy criminies. Look at what we made, everyone. Wow, look at how that turned out. Let's give her a taste. Oh, the dumplings, perfect. Let's make sure we get all those ingredients. Just as good as I remember. Look at how perfect and doughy those are. Let's see those comments below, everybody. What do you think of this recipe? Bite number two. The flavor from that looks, it's almost like a potato texture I can, I'm can i getting in there. But it's got this almost like a nutty flavor to it. It's unbelievable. Really complements that chicken and those, and those biscuits really well. Got a little bit of spice from our hot sauce still. That's phenomenal. This definitely beats the, the pizza I made in the first earth oven by a long shot. What do you think, mister? 
Okay, I know you want a dumpling. Yum! Well, Earth Heaven, it's been real. Thanks for the great meal. Unbelievable! Yeah, Look, get out here? nothing. Yeah, he just missed one. Stripped him. Well, as the sun goes down, it sets on another awesome stay fishy adventure. I want to thank you all so much for being here this week, and I really hope you enjoyed this Earth Oven 2.0 video. I can't wait to get with you all for the next adventure next week. Remember, 4.30 Pacific Standard Time next Wednesday. We'll be back here and out in great Mother Nature enjoying another adventure. You all stay fishy. We'll see you next time.